So for the past few weeks, months, whatever you want to call it, for the past few couple years, I've been seeing this where people are discussing about how photography is just easy. I've said it myself multiple times that photography is the easiest hobby to learn because all you have to do now is just have the camera and you have to try hard to not take a great image. And I mean, you have to try yourself to make an image that is super duper unpleasing once you understand how to point a camera and take a photo. It's something that I've heard James Poppy spring up. The biggest problem I have with this system and it's not just a criticism of Sony, because uh, I think this applies to most of the camera manufacturers, um, is that it's a bit boring. And this setup and this system just feels a bit, I don't know, sterile, I suppose. And as I say, it's not directly a criticism of Sony. It's a criticism, I think, of uh, the camera industry at large. And the same thing with Manny Ortiz, who recently in his Fujifilm X-T5 video said that, as me being someone that uses a lot of the newer cameras and the, the latest tech in cameras, um, I can tell you that these cameras are making photography so easy that it's starting to make the process a little bit more, a little bit less fun. And it's kind of sterilizing the, the, the process, you know? And I'm glad that Fuji is you know, keeping, you know, keeping the dials and keeping you more involved in the process while including some of the latest tech. And it's one of the reasons why both of those people have some kind of Fujifilm camera in their arsenal. They're not switching to completely, but it is a reason why a lot of photographers switch to Fujifilm or to film altogether. And in a day and age where cameras are just going to get better, they're just going to get smarter because people are going to be uh, continuing to say that this is what makes a good camera is by adding more and more and more. At what point are we at a position to where people are gonna start feeling like digital photography, is it ruining photography? I'm here in Philadelphia and um, let me take you on the journey and how I got here. I've heard people talk about this a lot. And as someone who switched to Fujifilm, not because of the aesthetic and because of the dials and because of the analog feel, um, I never really associated with it at all. This idea of um, photography is funner when you have more variables you're in control of and more things to mess up. One of the things that really intrigues me about this is whenever I see these YouTubers who for so long have been talking about it's all about the sensor. It's all about the image quality. It's all about the eye autofocus. And I love using this because I know I'm getting this, this, and this. People are starting to discuss how they're kind of just blah to photography. And it has nothing to do with the hardships of anything, really. It just has to do with the ease of photography, which is something that really intrigues me. And it's a conversation I've had with a lot of people whenever they switch to Fujifilm. And a lot of people switch and immediately switch back. But when they switch, it's because they're wanting something more. They've held someone else's Fujifilm. They've seen it. They like the dials. They like the look, the feel, the aesthetic. All that pleases them, not from a space of creativity, meaning the end result, but from a space of the process of creating. Um, it's the same way with film photography. It's, we've seen this thing blow up, and a lot of people talk about film photography is great because the process. A lot of people talk about Leicas are so amazing because of the process. There are a lot of people who specifically buy Leica because it is a manual focused digital camera when they're buying digital bodies and the rangefinder patch, and they enjoy the idea, and it's something that I enjoy too, of you have to hit the shot and it's up to you. The camera's not gonna bail you out. It's not gonna save you. You have to be able to judge distance. You have to be able to be quick. You have to uh, know what to do. It reminds me of uh, three gun. It reminds me of shooting at a range or hunting where you kind of have every single variable at your disposal and you have to put them in sequential order line by line in the correct order in order to get the result that you want. And photography for me, has been like that ever since I switched to the X Pro 3. Um, you know, wasn't as fast as my A7 III. Um, when I switched to the X-T3, again, all these different Fujifilm cameras, they're not as fast as my Sony A9. All these things that I was using whenever I was working for companies, it's not that they were the fastest, but for me, the image quality and the feeling of these images, being able to work with them in Fujifilm's RAW editor, being able to adjust them in Lightroom, being able to add these simulations, 
that was something I like to do in post. And it's similar to what a lot of people appreciate about working in post with film. And I feel like for a lot of people, especially Sony, Canon, Nikon shooters, the extent of your creation from what I'm hearing is you press the shutter button and then immediately from there you import in Lightroom and you put on whatever preset you want and that's it. Maybe if you're a touch up, uh, someone does touch ups, you do a little bit more, but it doesn't seem like there's a lot behind it. With Fujifilm, with Leica cameras like this, with film, there's a lot more steps. You're a lot more in tune with it. And I feel like as people, we have this innate desire to create, whether it's music, whether it's learning a skill like woodworking, um, no matter what it is, humans want to create something. We want to feel the accomplishment of learning something, of struggling and succeeding. And that's the thing. The, the, the idea of succeeding after a struggle and overcoming something is something that releases a huge amount of dopamine and just is so huge to the human being. I mean, it's what keeps humans evolving, what keeps them fighting. The idea that there is more, you know, it put a man on the moon, you know, it put a tiny little chip this big that could power, you know, thousands of computers. It's because humans are always desiring to be creating the next best thing to create amazing works, all these things. And in photography, we've allowed human nature to create these amazing cameras that can do this, that can do that, that you'll never miss this, you'll always be able to track that. And now we're starting to see it reel back, not in the technology standpoint, but from what people desire. I know a lot of people, and someone brought this up, I know a lot of people that shoot Fujifilm as like just a family camera, and he said it's because it can't handle sports and stuff, but I shoot sports with an X-H2S uh, or with an X-T4, shot it with an X-H1 professionally. I know a guy who's literally shooting UTSA and Longhorn games with two X-T4, so I don't know why people make shit up if they don't know any better. But, um, but you know, he made a really good point. A lot of people have this as a personal camera. An X100V is something that a lot of people have in their pocket or an X-Pro3 or whatever. Fujifilm is something they have for their personal life and not for their work. And I think that that's both great, honestly, to be able to separate those two. Um, you know, that way you go home and you know you have a just a me camera. It's something I'm working towards getting to. But at the same time, I think it's something that is also just very telling of where we're at in photography today. Um, it's great to have a camera that can do everything you want it to do and you don't have to think about anything, especially if you're making money. I mean, it's just amazing. It's simple. It's easy. But at what point does that really create burnout, number one? And number two, just a sense of dissatisfaction whenever you complete the process you're going to complete. I think that's one thing that we take for granted whenever it comes to photography is photography first and foremost is for us. Yeah, it can make money. A lot of you guys, you love it because it can get you clout. But photography first and foremost is there so that you can create, so that you can have the sense of accomplishment, so that you can document, so that you can make something that you feel is beautiful and you want to share with others or keep for yourself. That is literally the point of photography. Now you can say, oh, it was first made for this, this, and this, but first thing I'm going to say is go get some bitches. But whenever it comes to this art of photography and what exactly it is and what exactly, you know, we are missing or what's too easy and what's not, I think it's just up to each person. And I think for some people, there's kind of a fatigue whenever it comes to the camera doing everything. It's something that I felt before too. Um, and the fatigue is really just this idea of, you know, everything feels like work. And it's not because it's hard and it's laborious, um, because honestly, the opposite feels like fun. It, it, it reminds me of, and this may seem like a really weird analogy, is the film, the, you know, the, the Fujifilm cameras, the older digi cams, the older, you know, um, CCD sensors, having to work with these things and work within the limitations and everything reminds me of someone who's working with wood or working with leather. My buddy Chris is making amazing leather goods. Um, shout out to him. Um, I'll go ahead and put his information down here at the bottom. That way you can see because he can make you SD card wallets, all kinds of stuff, straps. But this guy works with leather and it, I've seen him in his trial and error. And now when he's making these amazing leather goods that look, <laughs> I mean, out of this world, there's a sense of accomplishment with it because all the things that he had stacked up and layered and all the trial, all the error, all the shit I didn't do right, all the worry if I send this out, can I sell this, is it going to work, is it going to hold up, all the things that he had to go through, the money he had to invest into it, the time he had to invest into it, when it's great at the end, it pays off. And that's kind of what film and working with certain cameras and even the feeling you get from Fujifilm cameras with the dials and having to 
push everything in on the XT5, my shutter, my ISO, all these different things, the, the aperture ring being on the, on the lens, all these things just make it worthwhile because the end result, you feel like you put a lot into it. But when it comes to some of these digital cameras, this Canon, the Sonys, the Nikons, not that they're perfect because no camera's perfect. It's kind of like you're just ordering that leather good and then you take that leather good out and then you go and you take it into your shop and you set it right there on your leather workbench and you're done. You don't really have to do anything besides be there now at this point because the good was already done for you. Someone already put everything into it. The workers, the manufacturers, the engineers for Sony, for Canon, for Nikon already fashioned this um, device for you and kind of just put it right there in front of you. Now, all you have to do is be there in order to use it to be able to reap the benefits. Now, that may seem like it's silly, but in the same way with a leather good, ordering a leather wallet and then putting it in your shop and you have all this gear to be able to create something and now boom, here's the wallet. That would seem pretty, pretty dissatisfying whenever it comes to creating for yourself. And that's what I think it's akin to. I'm not saying these people are wrong. I'm not saying you shouldn't shoot Sony or Nikon or Canon. I don't really don't give a shit what you shoot. I've shot Sony, Nikon, Canon, Fuji over the past few years. I mean, I shot with Canon earlier this year. Cameras are cameras. They don't mean shit. It's all about the photographer. But with that, the photographer should have some type of joy with it. It should mean something to you. And I'm not saying and like, oh, you know, uh, you have to do it for the art. Don't get paid. Don't do all this. You guys make your money in photography because people are going to take advantage of you no matter what. So take advantage of people who love what you do. What I am saying is this is you should pull joy out of something you're investing so much time and energy in. If not, it's just pulling the joy out of you. That's why a lot of you guys, when you get home, you set your camera down, you can't look at it. It's one of the reasons why I'm hesitant to buy the X-H2S. It was too damn good. I mean, too damn good. I just, it was too damn good. It just reminded me of an R6. It reminded me of a, a more akin actually to like an R3, uh, to a Sony A92. It was just good. It just hit everything. You know, there is something special about having gear that requires a little bit of effort because in the end that little bit of effort whenever it pays off with a fantastic image it's fantastic and it's something that i think that every single one of us knows you can't fabricate that anywhere else you can't fabricate that any way else so keep shooting what you're shooting have a great time doing it um, learn to put some steps in your process maybe or just learn to take a break from photography altogether not every shot has to be a banger and I think that's another thing we have we put a lot of pressure on ourselves not every shot has to be a banger though and even more than that um, you know something like a cell phone a little point and shoot like I brought with me I got a Fuji XQ2 which is taking just okay photos but something like that that takes the stress off to where you have to work to fix it work to make it look good in the end it kind of does pay off in a simple way where, you know, instead of just having that leather good shipped to you, that wallet shipped to you, and I'm gonna put it in my shop now, let me work on it, oh, boom, it's done, because it came to me done, you know, putting a little effort into it, putting a little bit of, you know, um, patina in it here, maybe making a trim here, cut there, uh, stitch here, um, you kind of get a little bit more satisfaction with that. And so I hope you guys understand what I'm saying, hope it makes sense, just decided to record a quick video. If you guys are watching this, um, Philly trip's long gone, but um, just wanted to record something while I was here. But have a good one. Alright, baby. Take it light, but take it. Yeah.